welcome to physics through computational thinking. In this very first video, we will tell you a little bit about the toolkit that we are going to use to learn this course. The toolkit that we will use to learn this course is called Mathematica. We can do a quick search about Mathematica. Mathematica is a software that allows you to do symbolic computing and a lot of other technical computing. What we will use do in this course is that we will use a free version of Mathematica that is available online. So, what we will do is for that we will search Wolfram Cloud. When you search for Wolfram, Wolfram Cloud, click on the first link Wolfram Cloud over here. In this Wolfram, Wolfram Cloud link, you go ahead and click on sign up for free. So, create a free account. This account will allow you a basic plan. When I click on sign up for free, it opens me a short form. You put in your email, your name and other information and then you go ahead and click create Wolfram ID. This will create your Wolfram account. Since I already have a Wolfram ID, I will just go ahead and, and click on sign in. I will input my credentials here. Click on sign in and this will take me to my Wolfram account. This is this says over here Wolfram Cloud and it allows me to do two things. I can create a new notebook or I can uh, go and check out my files. So, what I will do is I will create a new notebook today and this is what where we will start exploring what is this software about and how we can use this for computational thinking and apply um, use it as a toolkit to understand and solve physics problems. When you open this interface, you will see on the right hand side, you have got this panel, which allows you to do, gives you tips about getting started using the notebook. It gives you a short one minute video of how to get started with that. I will also cover some of the basics and gives you uh, details about uh, Mathematica or Wolfram language. Um, there is online book and open course, there is documentation and various other things that you can explore over here. At any point, if we need to refer to any of the library, we can click on the documentation over here. Once the documentation loads, it gives you stuff about, it gives you information about various kinds of functions and features that are available in the software. Rather than right now exploring all of these things, I would suggest that we start learning how to use the software and start doing some very basic and simple things. So, the purpose of this intro is to focus on some of the very basic and simple things. I will go ahead and click here new notebook. When I click on the new notebook, a notebook interface will open. Since this is in a web browser, this is a cloud based application. Anything that I do calculate here it will be sent to over the internet to the Wolfram cloud. Computation will, do, will be done over there and then the information will come back and will be presented over here just like any other cloud computing platform. It is a very straightforward interface. You will get familiar with this interface very, very quickly. I want to point out to you that uh, uh, you see a Mathematica logo over here and you, it says Wolfram Cloud on the top and over here in front of the plan, it says you are right now registered for a basic plan. If you click on upgrade, you can upgrade, but those are, uh, you will have to make some uh, payment for that. I would recommend that we will stick to basic plan. You do not have to take an upgraded plan. We should be able to do everything that we want to do with the basic plan. Basic plan comes with certain limitations such as the amount of file space you will have is very limited. You can only create uh, about 5 files, uh, but in that case you can just download the files whenever necessary on your computer, on your desktop, keep them saved over there and whatever file you are computing with you can upload it. So, that way you will not need to make any uh, payments to upgrade and we will be able to use the uh, free basic version to learn the essentials the, uh, of computational thinking <coughs> using Mathematica. Um, just like your browser, you have got a file interface over here, which allows you to do various options. I will suggest that uh, you explore these options on your own. What I will do here is I will go to the view and set the magnification to 200, so that you can actually see what I am typing. So, let us go ahead and get started with this. The first thing I will do is I will just add 1 plus 1. To calculate 1 plus 1, I will just type 1 plus 1 and then over here I see this little icon, I can click on this and I can say evaluate cell. When I say evaluate cell, 
it calculates 1 plus 1 and shows me in the output cell the value is 2. I can also do this calculation 1 plus 1 by rather than clicking on this button over here I can also press shift and enter on my keyboard and that will also do the same evaluation. So, let me do that over here 1 plus 1 I have press shift press enter and I will do the computation give me the result. So, this is a very basic interface I type in my command and it executes and gives me the output over there. Let us go ahead and do something more interesting I want to let us say I want to plot sin of x. So, I can say plot inside the square brackets I will say sin of x and I will say plot me sin of x between for x between minus 10 and 10. Again in order to evaluate I can click on the evaluate link over here or I can press shift plus enter. This gives me a plot of sin of x sin of x is an odd function it oscillates between uh, it, it, is a, it is a period of 2 pi. So, you see this is a odd function with a period of 2 pi. I can go ahead and do some more things let me go ahead and actually add uh, two plots on top of each other. So, I will say I want to see a plot of sin x and cos x. When I do that I get a plot of sin x and cos x. I can do a few more properties and these properties are usually declared by giving options. So, I can say plot style thick and I will make my lines a little bit more thicker. Now, I, I, I see two curves over here I want to make sure that I each of the curves get labeled properly. So, what I will do is I will add legends to this by using the option plot legends and then I will press the dash key the greater than sign and the moment I do that becomes an arrow and then I will say um, let this be automatic. Let the Wolfram language decide how to do that and what I see here is the new plot that comes up it says that curve number 1 is in blue the curve number 2 is in um, uh, orange. I can make it uh, little bit more interesting by typing saying plot legend should be expressions. So, within within quotes I can type expressions and I can get a plot where each of the plot is labeled by uh, the corresponding function. Now, at this point it may look like all of this is uh, magic how do I know which commands to type which options to take how do I know what is the syntax of uh, this command. So, for that purpose what we will do is anytime you need some help you select a command or select a keyword and press F 1 on your keyboard. The moment you press F 1 on your keyboard the documentation for that particular thing will whatever you have selected will load up on the side panel and you can read the documentation and figure out how to go about it how to make up how to use a particular option or how to use that particular function. For plot legends if I do the same thing the documentation for plot legends will load and if you read through this uh, example it says here that make a plot of sin x and cos x like that and says plot legends automatic and it will give you the automatic plots. If you say expressions it will give you plot legends as expression and so on and so forth you can try these various options. Mathematica or Wolfram language syntax works uh, in a very uh, in the following way usually there is a name of a function for example, function is sin and then its argument are placed inside a square bracket. So, sin of x will be simply sin of x. If I want to evaluate sin of something I have to say what is its value. So, I can say I want it to be evaluated at pi so, I can simply say sin of pi which of course, is 0. Let us try sin of pi by 2, which is 1. So, the if a, if a function has multiple arguments, those multiple arguments will again be inside the square brackets and will be separated by commas. For example, in the case of the plot function over here, 
let us do that again. Let us this time plot tan hyperbolic of x. As I am plotting this command, it shows that it is expecting another argument over here, that is why you see a red caret character. And I place a comma, and the next argument is the range of x, which is specified by a list, which is curly, a set of curly brackets and, and information inside those curly brackets. I am going to type in x, which declares that x is the argument with respect to which I have to plot this function. Then I will say range of x is minus 10 to 10. When I execute this using shift plus enter, I get the plot of 10 hyperbolic. We can do many interesting things with Mathematica. Let us go ahead and explore another example. I am going to, uh, this time I uh, will simplify something. Let us say sin x times cos y plus sin y times cos x. Now, we all know what is this? This is sin of x plus y. So, let us go ahead and execute this. So, I will press shift plus enter again and I just get what I typed in, nothing changed apart from some shuffling of the order of these expressions. What I will do is, I will wrap this entire expression inside the simplify command or simplify function. So, here is my expression which is inside the simplify function. So, the argument of the simplify function is the expression. Let us go ahead and execute it and I get the sign of x plus y. So, Mathematica that way is able to do lot of uh, algebraic calculations as well. As we go along in this course, we will explore more of these things in detail. This was a quick introduction of Mathematica for you. I would suggest that you click on the quick links over here and go ahead and explore some of these options given over here. And in the next session, we will start with some of the more commands and functions in Mathematica and we will start applying them for various maths and physics problems such as visual thinking and um, solving physics problems. See you in the next session.